Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper. I'm back at it at the retreat location. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate the power of packet radio, the ability to communicate digitally without the internet. This is a lost art. Back in the 1980s and early 90s, amateur radio operators had packet radio networks that spanned the globe. You could send a message from the East Coast of the United States to the West Coast to Asia and back with no problems, and that was before the internet. But with the advent of the internet and cheap computers, Packet radio fell out of favor and the art was kind of lost. The subject matter experts that wrote the software and designed the networks moved on to other interests and today there's virtually no packet radio networks left anywhere in the world. There's a few but it's hard to find one. Well today we're going to demonstrate how you can set one up and get started reintroducing the lost art of packet radio. I'm going to walk over to the shed here and show you the station that I have set up for today's video. I apologize for the mess in the shed. The plan today is to go mobile and to communicate with this station up here on the bench here in the shed. I have a Yaesu FT2600M connected to Cantronics Cam XL terminal node controller. And as you can see there, there's a light flashing mail. And that's the subject of today's video. We're going to demonstrate how you can send and receive digital messages using packet radio and leave it on the modem itself. Each one of Cantronics modems contain a bulletin board system or a mailbox. So you can remotely send messages to this station, address to other amateur radio operators, leave them on the bulletin board system, and when they log in, they can actually list all the messages and read the messages addressed to their station. So it's a very effective means of digital communications and is really applicable to emergency preparedness and prepping, especially if the grid goes down, the internet goes down. Without the internet, most people could never communicate digitally. However, with packet radio, amateur radio operators can always have a means to communicate digitally even if the internet goes down. I'll roll over now to the mobile station and show you the components before we head off the mountain and actually do a demonstration. Alright guys, I've got the mobile components laid out on the banister here in a block diagram fashion. The first component of course is the laptop computer because we're communicating digitally. I'm going to use a program called Hyperterminal. Hyperterminal used to be included in Windows operating systems, but they stopped, I think, with the release of Windows 7, so I actually had to buy a copy. To the right of the laptop computer is a serial cable. I need this to interface the laptop computer to the Cantronics modem. My laptop computer, like many today, does not have a serial plug in the back of it, so I had to buy a USB to serial adapter and a standard DV9 to DV25 serial cable to connect to the back of the Cantronics terminal node controller. Below the terminal node controller I have hardened power systems QRP Ranger. I'm going to use that to power the Cantronics packet communicator 3 plus terminal node controller that's held on there with the bungee cords. To the right of the modem and the power supply I have the cable that will interface the modem to the radio. This cable was made by Les at HandmadeParts.com. I'll put a link down below. Great people to work with. All you have to do is email them the type of radio you have and the type of modem you have. And a week later, you get a perfect cable every time. I've got a dozen cables from Les and I've never had a problem. So this is my cable that will interface the modem to my Yaesu handheld radio. Today we're going to operate with FT60R Yaesu handheld radio. This is a dual band radio we're going to operate in the VHF mode for today's video. So that comprises the mobile configuration. We're going to throw all this in a truck, head off the mountain, get some lunch, and send and receive some packet radio messages from the vehicle to the mountain here and leave those messages on the Cantronics Cam XL in the shed and then later on we'll come back, access that packet modem there in the shed and list all the messages that were saved on the modem like an old-fashioned bulletin board. So let's get this all packed up, get off the mountain, get some chow, and get operating. Alright guys, we've reached our mobile operating position where we can demonstrate packet radio. We're in the area of Food Lion parking lot, and if any of you have read Max Alexander's book, Patriot Rising, this is the food line that was the evacuation point when the Russians attacked the town of Romney. And I'll put a link down below to Max's book. In the back seat of the truck here, I have my neighbor, N3LJA, Pete. He's the control operator for this demonstration. We've programmed his call sign into the Cantronics Packet Communicator 3 Plus modem. We've got the Yaesu FT60R all set up and ready to go, and the laptop computer running the hyperterminal. 
So what I'll do here is I'm going to pass the camera off to my cameraman Pete and 3 lja and we're actually going to use the desktop capturing software to show you the commands that I enter to check the bulletin board to see what mail is waiting for us and we'll send a message up to the bulletin board system. Again, we're doing all this without any internet. We're just using packet radio and we're storing these messages on the terminal node controller up in the shed. So let me pass the camera off to Pete. We'll get the desktop capture software up and running and we'll show you the magic of packet radio and how you can use it to support emergency communications. Recording? Recording. Okay guys, we got the laptop computer set up here. I'm using the desktop capture software. So what I'm going to do is open up HyperTerminal. Again, I had to buy this. The old Windows operating systems used to include this. I think I spent 60 bucks. But it's the only program you'll need to do packet radio when using Cantronics modems. Now I already have a default configuration set up. So I'm going to go to File, Open, KPC3. We're going to hit Open again. And I'm just going to hit the carriage return or the return and see if I get a command. Now, these modems are very command driven. So what I'm going to do is type help. And it's going to list all the optional commands that I can put in this modem. Now, if I want to know anything about a specific command, I'll do a question mark. And let's see, let's pick a command. I'm going to put CWID. CWID. Let's see what that command is all about. And we'll hit enter. And this tells me how I can program that. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen now. We'll come up here to edit, clear. I'm going to hit return again to get a command line. And this modem here in the truck is configured as N3LJA Pete's call sign. And now I'm going to connect to the modem up in the shed. That's K1DOS-1. The dash one is the designator for the mailbox. So I'm going to do C. That's connect. That's the connect command. Space. K1DOS-1. I'm telling my radio here to go out and connect there and I want to connect to the mailbox. I hit enter and we're connected and this is the response I got back. It tells me how much memory is available and the commands I can enter are B for buy. I don't know what J is. K for kill. That's how you delete a message. Or L for list. R for read. S for send. So let's type L and get a list of what's up there. And there's one message on the bulletin board from me to N3LJA, address to Pete. We did this last night as a test. Need more beer. Now, if I wanted to read that message, I would type R, and then the message number is 3. And then the station will transmit that down. There we go. Next trip to town, please get more beer before the walkers arrive. All right, so we've read that message. We got it here in the truck. We'll go in the food line. We'll get some more beer before the walkers arrive. So we're going to hit K. We're going to kill that message, 3, and get rid of it. And now that message will be gone. And we can confirm that by typing L for list. And we get nothing back. I'm going to clear the screen here again. Okay, so we got a fresh command line, so I'm going to hit send command to K1DOS. I'm going to address this to my station up there. Hit return. And now it's asking for a subject at food lion got beer. We didn't get any beer, but that's our subject. Now it's going to say type in the message. On the way back with, can't type here, supplies. ETA, 20 minutes. Now I hit a carriage return, and to end the message, I do slash EX. Hit return, and that'll post that to the bulletin board. And we can confirm that that message is waiting by hitting L to get a list. Okay, I had a little technical issue. I had to hit the clear screen, so we're going to go ahead and confirm if that message is up there on the bulletin board. We're going to hit L, the L command, and the radio should respond and give us a list. So there it is. We got the message. It's now message number five from N3LJA here in the truck to K1DOS. That's now sitting on the modem up at the shed. 
when I get up there, I can actually go in locally or with my radio, connect and read that message. So there's a good example of how you can use packet radio as part of your emergency communications plan and emergency preparedness. We're going to do a lot more videos on packet radio, but I want to do a quick field demonstration on the bulletin board system because I think this is a really cool feature of packet radio and kind of a lost art that I think should really be revived, especially in the emergency preparedness community. I'd like to say thank you to my neighbor Pete, N3LJA, for acting as cameraman and control operator for this mobile operations video. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper with a quick demonstration of packet radio bulletin board systems. And we're going to enter the last command here and close this video out for B for buy and disconnect from that station. Thanks for watching, guys.